What I've been asked to do is to talk about the, uh, the business side of, of this uh, open data initiative and why IBM is, is committed to this. Uh, you know, truthfully, you know, in terms of our commitment, uh, what IBM has done is it volunteered. We volunteered to provide the, the platform, the hosting platform for the, uh, for the data. In fact, we call it the open innovation uh, platform because as Ronan said, for us it's much more than just about putting the data out there. It's about spawning uh, collaboration around the data. And while that may sound like it was done uh, you know, for, uh, as part of a uh, philanthropic effort, um, and, and IBM does have uh, significant uh, philanthropic efforts around Smarter Cities. In fact, we, we launched the uh, Smarter Cities Challenge uh, about a year ago where we awarded, where we announced that we were going to award about $50 million to 100 cities over uh, three years to try to continue to spawn these types of creative uh, projects amongst cities globally. Um, but that's not what I was asked to, uh, to talk about uh, today. And uh, as Tim said, I'm, I'm the head of the, uh, the research center here, so I would actually feel more comfortable talking to you about the science and the technology uh, behind this. But um, the fact is that in order for this to be sustainable, uh, it's much more important uh, that it makes sense for people and that it makes sense for business. Um, no matter how good the technology is, unless those things make sense, it just won't be sustainable. So, so that's why I'm here to talk about the, uh, the business side of this. Um, just quickly, I, I did want to, uh, to give you a sense of, of where I'm from. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is describing the research center, the new research center. As, as Tim said, it was announced in, in March of, of last year. Uh, you know, we are staffing it with uh, people, who, you know, by recruiting and developing talent in the areas of uh, data mining, deep data analysis, so data mining and machine learning and optimization. Um, and, and just to kind of make a point uh, earlier, you know, you, you see the optimization on, on the chart. And I think one of the earlier talks was saying, you know, you, you can't just have, you know, this purely optimized uh, city that's not going to work. And so. Uh, and in fact, one of the biggest areas that we are, are really investing in is not just optimization in its purest sense, it's optimization under uncertainty. Um, so how do you optimize when you don't you know, control the people and, and, and you don't want to, that you want to build a city that is, you know, that meets the needs of the cities, the, the people as they see it, right? So, so we're taking this, this approach that uh, is, you know, not purely, which is based in, in math and science, um, but also taking into account uh, very much the, the social aspects and, and the citizen needs uh, part of, of this equation. Uh, and a lot of people often ask me, why did IBM choose Dublin to locate one of its uh, research uh, centers? And especially, why did it choose to do it for its Smarter Cities research lab? And uh, well, it, it was two reasons. Uh, one is that uh, we, we got an enormous uh, amount of, uh, you know, uh, an enormous sense of, of sharing from the city of, of Dublin and, uh, you know, the local authorities, a willingness to, to share their data. You know, John was talking earlier about Dublin as, as a test bed. You don't hear very many city managers uh, talking about their city as a, as a test bed, so it's very encouraging for us. And, the other reason why we wanted to locate here is uh, we have research centers in, you know, in Beijing, uh, you know, in, in Delhi, uh, in New York, uh, and so we felt like, you know, we, you know, we had people that were looking at some of the challenges of cities, you know, in America where the design point for the city is the car, and we felt like we had people who were looking at uh, this from the point of view of, you know, in Asia where the design point is scale you know, enormous scale. Uh, and what we wanted, we, what we felt was that uh, the European cities were, were very different and that they were, it's, it's, it's all about community and it's about being able to have smarter cities while preserving that sense of, and even strengthening uh, that community. Um, and so that's, that, those are some of the, the main reasons why we decided to, to locate the lab here in, in Dublin. So now I want to, to switch and talk uh, as I was instructed about the, uh, the business side for, for smart to sit, or for this open innovation platform and, and open data. So uh, one of the things that we've, we've observed is that uh, you know, uh, smarter cities or what we feel are, are smarter cities are those that are able to, to integrate uh, key services and minimize risk. In other words, 
uh, what happens is that you do see cities that, um, that have their individual um, silos of, of data and, and services. And there's some amount, obviously, of interconnection uh, between those. Uh, but then when some uh, event happens, some very significant event happens that disrupts the normal flow of things, uh, when they're not in interconnected, that's when things start to, to fall apart, right? And that's when there are, you know, challenges. And so uh, one of the things that we, we feel like is the definition of, of smart cities are those that are able to, you know, to leverage information uh, to be able to anticipate problems and then to have a coordinated response across these different, uh, you know, areas or different services. And then secondly, and this is where it starts to transition to the, to the open data and the motivation uh, behind that. Uh, you know, smarter cities are able to, to communicate and integrate beyond the city, right? So it's not just about connecting the different silos within the cities. It's about being able to integrate and pull together, you know, data from, from partners, people that are providing services uh, to the city, um, and, and, and likewise for which the city is providing services to, which is the citizen, right? So uh, the smartest cities, you know, have control on this, on this ability to communicate their information in a safe and secure and privacy-preserving way amongst these different entities. Uh, this slide, um, it, it has a lot of big numbers, and it's, it's based off of projects that IBM has, has done uh, with smarter cities. And it shows a couple of things. One of the things that it shows is that um, there is value in, in the data, right? So there's value in the data in terms of being able to run cities more efficiently. Um, there's value in the data uh, for being able to provide better services uh, to the citizens of the, uh, of the city, right? Um, another interesting message in this chart, I think, is that the Smarter Cities uh, strategy for IBM didn't come about because um, a single executive sat back and looked upon the world and decided that there should be a smarter cities or a smarter planet or, or something like that. Um, I actually started working on these types of projects with smarter cities over eight years ago. Um, and it was these types of small onesie twosie types of projects that we started working on. And the way that the, the strategy actually came about is, I think is an interesting story because we in research were working on these different projects. We were seeing great gains in terms of what we were able to do with the data. Um, and we had people coming in, as they always do, and asking us, what are you doing in, in, in research? What's, you know, what's the latest things? And we were telling about this, and we were especially telling about the, the day when there would be so much data um, that it would be impossible to really store it um, or analyze it or, or, or get value from it. That, that data would be something where, at most, 1% of the data that's generated would be of any value, right? at most, 1%. And that we would need systems that would be able to take this data and, and dig into it, analyze it, and do it continuously in order to get value from it. Right? So, so we were working on these, and, and, and someone, you know, actually at that point there was a, you know, a, a, you know, a smart IBM executive that kind of looked upon it and said, you know, wow, you're you're trying to make like the, the planet smarter. Wow, that's really cool. And um, and, and that's kind of how it was uh, how it was started. But it's it really did. It was many years of these types of projects just small projects, just going in, looking at the data, finding something interesting, and figuring out how to put it together uh, into systems. Um, now, more into the, uh, into the business part. So what did IBM do with this, uh, you know, with this knowledge that we had all of these, these projects? Uh, instead of trying to, to go after something that would solve all the world's uh, problems, you know, the first product that we had in this space is what we call this, this oper intelligent operations center. It was basically about saying, you know what, what we could do is we've got all these tools and technologies for managing information, for developing systems, for, um, for communicating with open standards. If we were to put a face on that and make it easier for people who are writing the kinds of applications that I just showed on the previous page, that would be a value, right? Just just giving people a, a platform to be able to integrate these types of applications on would be of value, um, and so that's where we that's where we started with our product product space, and it, it's referred to this as this you know intelligent operations center, as, as I said, and and the way that what we're doing here with Dublin kind of fits into that 